Hello everyone and welcome to Trending Topics Live, our new series with video interviews. I'm Alex Kolkunarova, your host today. Um, the corona crisis and it, uh, all its consequences caught us all as businesses far less prepared than we wish we were. Um, and therefore, since the beginning of everything, we've been trying as a media to put together all those stories that will help us as businesses to go through this moment. Um, we've been trying to be very constructive, um, identify stories of entrepreneurs from which we could all learn. And therefore we have as our guest today, Christo Christo, who is a digital entrepreneur, serial digital entrepreneur actually, a mentor at the Entrepreneurial Network Endeavor, and also a business angel. Um, Christo is also our special guest, one of them for next week's webinar on the matter of revisiting marketing and communication strategies. Uh, the registration link could be found below uh, in the comments. And now I'm saying hi to Christo. How are you? How have been the past weeks for you? They have been absolutely amazing from a family perspective. <laughs> how, he, how, uh, how are they for you? Well, actually, it's not as bad. Running a media outlet from home, at least from editorial perspective, is not that hard. But as we both will agree, and you'll tell us a bit more about that, from a business perspective, it's quite a challenge. Yes, I agree. <laughs> <laughs> well, tell us a bit more about that. I was actually about to ask you, um, how, are you how is your business going and all, in all the different directions you are developing businesses? Like uh, every every crisis is uh, a very big challenge for uh, a big majority of the businesses and also a very big opportunity uh, for maybe a small part of them. And uh, particularly what, uh, what I found ab find about uh, the corona crisis is that uh, it's helping uh, uh, sectors that are uh, very conservative and very hard to adapt to digital, move much faster in the digital realm that they used to. So if you're a startup, if you're doing business uh, in, a, in security, in healthcare, in, uh, uh, in deliveries, in e-commerce, um, in digital services, uh, most probably you have a very big opportunity uh, regarding this uh, this crisis. Of course, you have to solve um, the typical logistics challenges that we all face, like working from home, not knowing exactly uh, what the different teams are doing. Uh, you know, uh, it's a little bit more difficult organizing workforce uh, remotely. But I also think this is a very good uh, stepping stone for all of us to sort of rethink the working environment. We're so used to working in offices and everybody gather around and like discuss uh, a lot of uh, a lot of the time. Now, when we are working remotely, we see that uh, uh, to some extent maybe we are a little bit more efficient uh, because you don't have the commuting to work you don't have the uh, let's say uh, you know mingling together with the colleagues you don't have the wasting your time over lunch uh, and at the same time everyone that uh, you know you have been working with is in front of the computer so basically you're being bombarded with tasks and uh, uh, jobs so actually uh, I find the last uh, couple of weeks challenging in terms of organizing the, the work time. If we go beyond this uh, organizing the work in the company and look at the perspective outside the company and how we develop our business, uh, given the situation, of course, we cannot neglect the fact that is a challenge. And I, I know that you're a quite optimistic person, usually, but we need to talk about the challenges. What are the business-related challenges for you in, in your role? There, there are several. So for businesses that uh, they see their demand uh, diminishing, like uh, the publishing business, for example, um, it's getting, uh, advertising has dropped like uh, around 40, 45%. And therefore uh, publishers need to 
reevaluate their strategies in terms of monetization. So they need to go uh, a little bit more on uh, 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 subscription side, a little bit more on transaction side. They need to quickly ident identify advertisers whose business is uh, growing in this uh, crisis moment. So uh, it's a very fast paced uh, game and uh, they need to rethink their strategy. In businesses that are that are booming, like for example, uh, eBac, uh, there they have uh, another challenge, which is uh, scaling up the business uh, as rapidly as possible. So you have, uh, no matter on which side of the spectrum you are, if you are uh, badly hit from the crisis, you need to reorganize. If you are uh, benefiting from the crisis, you also need to reorganize. So. One thing is certain for all, and it is that uh, no one can stand still. You cannot stand still and hope that this thing will go away and uh, just with uh, doing the same thing that you have been doing always. So, uh, of course, it's better to be on the side that is, that is growing. Uh, but no matter which side you are, I see, uh, I see opportunities on both uh, sides of the spectrum. Businesses, basically, they need to... They need to, whatever revenue line they see decreasing and consumer demand they see decreasing, they must look for this demand that they haven't uh, touched. They must look at uh, the opportunities that they haven't considered or they must look at the projects that they have been, let's say, put on the shelf uh, for other times. Uh, and they need to quickly find this part of the piece that can grow in a let's say uh, not so much consumer demand uh, uh, you know people working from home people staying more on their uh, phones and uh, computers so this is the kind of thing uh, businesses need to look uh, look at what's your take on the on the following uh, quick decisions are usually emotional and in the most cases uh, not the right ones and in the situation it's kind of hard to navigate whether we should be taking quick decisions and moving forward or we should rather sit down and relax a bit and think of the situation more strategically what's the right is there a right thing that's a very difficult question <laughs> um it's um, a quick decision is better than no decision so in that in that uh, in that prospect i actually think that uh, what bulgarian uh, authorities did with uh, handling uh, the crisis and the lockdown and everything uh, was absolutely the right thing to do uh, and this was the perfect example how the bulgarian government handled the crisis of uh, quick decisions which uh, give quick results and they're not always the best so they had several decisions that weren't uh, weren't the best, but they either way they 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 took them, and when they saw that they're not uh, the right thing, they backed away from them and they took other decisions. So in a time of crisis, in a time of emergency, when the building is on fire, it's better to take quick decisions uh, rather than stay and burn. Okay. Uh, uh, one out of 10 quick decisions might be that you jump from the window from the 10th floor and you'll die anyway. But uh, but nine out of 10 quick decisions will, will keep you alive. So uh, it's uh, I'm a much bigger fan of uh, navigating quickly. And this is, there is no better time uh, to showcase that. You know, there is no better time to take uh, to take quick decisions. It's like uh, it's like the World War Two now. You're you're a fighter of a airplane uh, jet and a jet fighter, and uh, uh, you have to quickly navigate uh, your yourself through the battlefield. And you see the information is changing from day to day, from week to week. Uh, the environment is changing. Uh, we don't know yet what the economy, uh, how the economy will suffer. Uh, we have an idea at which sectors are going to be mostly hit. Uh, so for those sectors, navigating quickly and taking quick decisions is, is critical. So tourism and travel is going to be super hardly hit. Uh, 
you cannot be relaxing and trying to take strategic decisions there. You need to act uh, super, super quickly. Shared economy also uh, being hit, you need to act super, super fast. So if you're in the specter that is being uh, mostly hit, you need to take very quick decisions. If your sector is mildly hit, then maybe you need uh, you can you can take it on uh, a little bit slower. Case in point, actually, one of the projects that you are currently very closely involved with is the sports media genius. Um, this sport. It, this sport. I'm sorry. Yeah, and this is a very interesting case because on the one hand, as media, it's of course hit by the. Uh, advertising budget that uh, could right now and on the other hand it's very reliant on live sports which is not exactly happening right now how are you handling that situation <laughs> that's a very good example it's uh, the perfect storm for sport uh, publishing because there are no sport events whatsoever any uh, and at the same so you see your users and traffic going down and at the same time, you see revenues going down because obviously there are no uh, advertisers in the sector. Uh, so, so the way we handled it, uh, we, we launched uh, two new uh, things. One is uh, we launched uh, eSports. So we are finishing basically the Bulgarian League, uh, all the matches that were supposed to be played. We're finishing them on, uh, on, on PlayStation games inviting commentary trainers uh and uh you know doing the same type of entertainment that that we can do as if it were a, a live game so we're following up with uh, uh yesterday was played Levski would go it so uh we had the same sort of uh, huge emotions uh, a lot of uh, fans uh, and uh, what we see is that uh uh, fans are enjoying this because they have nothing else to watch. So even the fact that they're watching a, a video game uh, because you have like uh, football stars uh, commenting, because you have uh, trainers that are like some coaches. Uh, uh, so so that's why that's why it's it's interesting. Uh, and the second thing we did, uh, we weren't thinking of launching a Patreon campaign. Uh, uh, we were going to launch subscriptions directly in the in the mobile app, but we immediately postponed the mobile app for the time when the sports events are going to kick back in. Uh, and we, like, for one week, we launched a Patreon campaign, which is uh, sort of support our team. Uh, every every uh, every euro that you that you give is going directly to the to the team. Yeah, that's a great initiative for everyone who doesn't know. Patreon is actually a platform for um, supporting independent creators from different spheres. And we as training topics are also utilizing that opportunity, uh, believing that uh, media should come back to its roots in a way and be um, supported through its audience and not only advertising budgets in order to bring the most value to the audience, actually, for which it was originally created how is your campaign going so far it's super amazing we're super happy uh, I, I think it's uh, uh, on thursday tomorrow it, it's going to be one week and uh, we are uh, like uh, several patrons uh, short from reaching 100 patrons uh, uh, and the average uh, the average uh, amount is is super high so we're very very happy uh, and uh, the team really enjoys the idea and they started sharing uh, super exclusive content one that you cannot find on the on any other properties and i think the fans uh, are starting to enjoy it uh, even more so it's a very healthy relationship with the audience and we're looking forward to building on that. Well, great to know that uh, people are finally ready to pay for media, actually. Um, I'll ask you to switch your heads right now and we'll ask you a question uh, from your role as a business angel. Um, 
Currently, um, you're both business angel and a mentor at Endeavor, and on your portfolio as an angel, you have companies like eBag, which is a supermarket and is growing qu quite fast in the, uh, ever since that situation started. But you also have the group travel platform 15 to go, which I guess, since the travel is cut, is not having the best time of its life anyway. Um, are there any topics that um, are common between the different businesses you're working with? And um, what are founders actually asking about and what are they trying to um, get their heads clear about? Everyone, every, every entrepreneur is asking, uh, what should I do now? Um, how should I uh, handle this uh, incredibly challenging times uh, in this situation? And uh, where is my company going to be over the next, uh, uh, not like years, but like months? So uh, are we going to survive the next two months? Are we going to survive the next three months? Or are we going to grow three times over the next uh, one month? Uh, so uh, like I said, no matter which part of the spectrum you are, times are super, super challenging and they're changing very, very quickly. So, uh, so for, uh, for 15 to go, obviously there is no travel. Uh, and, uh, but what, what the team uh, right now is doing is actually taking the time to spend more uh, on infrastructure. So whatever your project uh, uh, is, if, if you're having a difficult time with, uh, with the demand, uh, now is probably a good time to spend uh, more money and resources on building the infrastructure that you need uh, when when the when the crisis uh, clears out. So, if you're if you if you, if you're hit by the uh, by the corona crisis, now it's a good time to invest in infrastructure, team setting up administrative tasks, one that you would never actually do. Uh, well, well, with uh, with the eBay case, it's totally on the opposite side. So everything has gone to hell there. There is no infrastructure projects being done. Uh, every everyone, including the CEO, is involved in day-to-day -day warehouse uh, operations so that they can fulfill the you know the the thousands of orders that uh, that are coming through their door. So it's uh, again, it's uh, if you're able to. And this is, I guess, what, uh, what, uh, what an investor should be doing. So when the founder is uh, either panicking or like uh, being over, uh, over hectic, uh, uh, you should sort of push them to, uh, okay, it's uh, no big deal, just spend more time on infrastructure, or okay, it's, uh, it's good that, we're, uh, that you're exploding in terms of operations, but let's not forget uh, uh, where we're supposed to go and what is the long-term goal. Given the current situation, how many months uh, ahead do you think a founder could, could plan? I think it's, uh, now is a very bad time to be doing forecasts. So we don't know the shape of the recovery, what it will be, whether it will be a V-shape, a U-shape, uh, an L-shape, <laughs> which no one hopes so uh so it's it's a very difficult time to plan so you're basically you you have to plan month by month so you're planning uh, month by month whatever business forecast that you had uh, coming into march uh, they're already old uh, and whatever business forecasts you try to do till the year end they're also going to be out like uh, next month. So uh, let's hope that we'll all recover uh, quicker than we, we expect. But uh, we should uh, prepare ourselves for uh, uh, several tough months uh, ahead. In general, in general, uh, all, of, uh, all of my investments are in the digital uh, realm. Uh, and the digital economy no matter which side of the spectrum you are, uh, is better poised off than the physical one. So if you're, uh, I, have, I have friends, entrepreneurs that are 
uh, in the physical uh, uh, retail business that are that are being uh, hit with 70 80 percent uh, of their revenues and the forecast for 2020 is uh, to have 50 percent uh, down in sales uh, i have uh, i have friends that are uh, in the horeca segment uh, which are also super badly hit so for the digital uh, for the digital you know environment it's uh, it may be bad but it's uh, we're much uh, in a much healthier position than uh, our physical counterparts speaking of revisiting plans um actually first is there one very actionable and particular advice you would give to founders in this situation yes it is uh, figure out uh, uh, figure out uh, what has uh, uh, what has changed in the market and figure out where you have the biggest growth opportunity my sole focus is uh, on finding growth opportunities across the different verticals because i think they're uh, something that used to be like a small crack in the market now due to the tectonic shifts maybe a much bigger opportunity and uh, us as founders we're always looking at the bigger opportunities and sometimes we miss uh, something smaller that has now become uh, bigger okay i guess we will be talking about that uh, a bit more detailed next week in the webinar but before that i want to just ask you for um, one last question uh, one last answer actually to the question um, speaking of revisiting marketing and communication plans in particular we've been hearing different hypotheses from cut your marketing costs to no do not cut costs increase them because you need to identify the channels now and benefit from them what's your take on that well i guess it's again uh, based on the based on the business that you that your business line that you're doing so obviously if, if you're in horeca so if you're in uh, accommodation hospitality restaurants uh, uh, doing marketing uh, right now is uh, is not very good unless you're you have uh, uh, the ability to deliver online so uh, so if you're a restaurant and you can you have the uh, delivery options then uh, and this is what we saw from uh, from happy immediately they tuned up their uh, marketing budgets digitally to promote the the online delivery option so uh, and also dominos did the same so uh, if 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 your uh, uh, core segment is very hardly hit uh, you need to stop the marketing for the core segment and uh, amplify the marketing for the segment that is uh, that is uh, that is running bigger it's again so it's again related to the opportunity that uh, that you must uh, find and you must seek on the market so if your focus was on uh, on one big opportunity which is now failing you uh, you need to re reshift uh, your focus to a maybe smaller opportunity initially, but uh, one that can survive the tough times. And for for the for that opportunity, you need to increase your marketing spend, obviously. Well, great. I'm excited to hear more about that in the conversation next week. I'm reminding you can register. Well, not you, Christo, but the audience. They can register below in the comments. Uh, with that, thank you. Looking forward to next week and wishing you a great day. Thank you very much, Alex. Bye.